Hey guys, this is Caleb with DSLR Video Shooter and welcome back to the B-Roll series. This is part two and we're gonna be talking about lighting, which is the most important thing I think in all video production, but especially when it comes to this style of footage. And what's cool is since I at least will be talking about filming smaller things, lighting is a lot easier and it's a great way to learn lighting. Also a quick note, I'll link to everything we're gonna be talking about in the description. Those links will be affiliated, so if you use them, we will get a small commission at no additional cost to you and that is always appreciated. With all that out of the way, let's head over to the bench and talk about lighting. All right, boys and girls, let's get this started. We've got our table, you know all about it. We talked about it last time. We've got our second camera, which is now set up, and we have our third camera here, which we're going to be using to walk around and talk about lighting. So the first thing you're going to notice is on our main camera here, things look pretty flat. Let me go ahead and zoom in, and nothing very exciting. So the very first thing I want to do is get a light up. And we're going to be doing that by mounting it to the ceiling. And there in the center, you'll notice we have what's called a baby plate, which is essentially adding a little light stand stud to the ceiling. And then on that, we have a grip head, which allows us to mount pretty much anything. You could add an arm to it, all kinds of stuff. Now my ceilings are fairly low. This is my view of the world here in the studio. I just banged it on this duct here uh, and yeah, don't have a lot of height here, so I can easily mount something here and it's pretty close to what I need. For you, you might need some kind of C stand that you can mount a light to or some kind of boom stand or just a light stand. Lots of different ways you can do it, but I'm gonna be using that to mount our light. I'm going to mount the camera to this here tripod and we'll talk about the light I'm gonna be using. I have it right here actually. Let me go ahead and spin this table around. And I've come up with a clever little way to mount this light. This is the Falcon Eyes 24 TDX. I've talked about it in the past. It's a great, great light. It's super lightweight. So I can just grab it here and that's it. It's a square light. I've got a grid on it. We'll talk about that in a second. And it has, you know, a little stud here that I can mount to the ceiling. Very, very simple. You don't need this light though. You can use any light. Uh, if you're getting started and don't have a ton of capital to spend, I would recommend one of the other Falcon Eyes Flex lights. They have a 12T, an 18T, lots of different options. I'm not sponsored by them. I bought several of these lights and I really, really like them. Okay, the light is mounted and now I'm gonna fire it up here just like so. And what's cool about this light is that, let me stand underneath it, um, it has a grid, this little, you know, black honeycomb looking dealio. It's going to fire that light straight down. So if I was using my backdrop, it wouldn't really shine light onto it. It's mainly going to direct that light straight down. It also has a layer of diffusion, which does a pretty good job, but we're going to be adding even more diffusion. Let's go ahead and position our table back to where it was in the middle, just like so. And now you'll start to see, I'm going to turn off the house lights so it you know, which only seeing the light coming from the ceiling now, things look pretty good, but it's still not quite where I want it. So what are we gonna do? You could bring the light closer, and if you had just a stand or some kind of boom or something like that, you could totally achieve that. But I'm gonna add some diffusion to get an epically huge light source, which just works amazingly for this stuff. So let me grab that real quick. And this is what we're going to be using. This essentially is kind of like a PVC square with some translucent diffusion, you know, attached to it. So we're going to be essentially putting it right about here, which if you can see on the other camera, looks pretty nice. It's a little darker. It's going to be darkening things up, but we need to mount this somehow. And this is the stand I'm going to be using. It essentially is a C stand, nice heavy duty one with an arm on it and I have a Mathalini clamp, which is what we're gonna to use to clamp to our frame. And now we have it mounted on the stand. So what's happening right now? We're taking that smaller light and making it huge. What does this do for us? It softens it and increases the size of the light, which is going to reduce shadows. And this is my favorite look ever. Let's look at the second camera here and we'll talk about what we're seeing. So if I move the diffusion out of the way completely, take a look at the shadow right down here in front of the camera lens. Let me actually move this a little bit. So we've got some shadows over here. I'm gonna bring the diffusion in. 
it's going to darken things, but watch those shadows. See that difference? It's going from, wow, that's pretty soft. It looks pretty nice to, oh my goodness, that looks so much better. And we just have a nice little kiss of a shadow on this side. And what's cool is I can control that amount of shadow by moving this thing up and down, closer to the subject or further away. And at this point, I wanna talk about the angles of light and what you should probably go for. Now, the bigger your light source, the less it's going to matter. It's gonna just cast soft light pretty much everywhere. But the smaller the source is, the more you're gonna to have to pay attention to light angles. So what's essentially happening right now is we're kind of backlighting this camera. You'll notice things are really well lit from this side, but then as we get closer to the front of the camera, it's getting a little darker. That's actually my favorite way to light is back key lighting. So this is a good way to go. You could light straight down from the top or top lighting, but this is more of a slight back light. And you might be thinking, but Caleb, the light's straight above it. Well, when you use diffusion like this, whatever that last modifier is, becomes the light source. So now that I have this thing angled, we're creating a different style of light source. So things look pretty nice right now, but let's say you aren't really happy with the shadow on this side of the camera. What we can do is add a little bit of fill. So this is a piece of foam core. This is primarily what I use when I wanna add a little bit of fill. And you can see pretty easily what happens when I bring that in. You can see it's filling in that shadow. Since we have this white paper background, it's pretty filled in. It's acting like a second source because the light's bouncing off the table, hitting the bottom of the camera. But if I add something a little darker, like this fake concrete vinyl that we've talked about in our last video, you'll notice that the shadows are a little more severe and we need to brighten a couple places up. So I've got my tiny little scrap piece of foam board here. And if I just bring it in a little bit, I'm just out of frame. Look at the difference between before, after, before, after. And the things you wanna pay attention to is obviously the distance of the board, also the angle, because again, we're essentially taking light from our main key here and bouncing it off of this guy to get that fill. Now this piece is a little too small for what I would like, so I'm gonna move up to something a little larger. Here's a much larger piece, typically the size that I use for this type of stuff. And often what I'll do, instead of trying to hold this or mount this some way special, I just literally lean it up against my tripod legs. Another way I rig up these boards often is with this. It's a very rudimentary, essentially a clamp. I just use scrap pieces of that same foam board and made this tiny little vise and essentially I can just take my foam board here, slide it in, and now I have a little freestanding little mount. So I'll go ahead and set that up. This will allow us to get it much closer to our subject. So I'll just get it out of frame. And there's our shot with the diffusion and without, just to show you the difference. Now I know this stuff sounds pretty nitpicky, but this is what makes epic B-roll, especially this tabletop stuff. When you get in there and just get those fine details all figured out, it makes such a big difference. So let's get back to our little Fuji set and spice things up a little bit. Okay, so we've changed things up a little bit. We have our backdrop kind of going up and away from our subject. So on our main camera, we get kind of a nice full shot using that concrete vinyl. I've thrown in just a couple items to make things a little more interesting. And then we have fill kind of all over the place. Honestly, some of this is just barely making some tweaks, but this piece right here is making a, a nice little fill on that dark side of the camera. And at this point you could call it a day, but I'm going to add one more light. Sometimes I do this, but not all the time. And it really does add a nice little touch to finish things off, if you will. I sound like a chef. And to mount our light, we're going to be using this tiny tabletop tripod. It has a ball mount it comes with. I'll link to that in the description. And for this, you can use anything. I like small lights because you can easily maneuver them with this kind of small set stuff. The one we'll be using is the Luxly Viola. It's a great little LED light. It is a little pricey. Another option to consider would be the brand new Kane TV RGB light, also a good option. Any of those will do just fine for you, or you could just use an Aperture M9 if you want just a little bit of kick from one side. Okay, I think this is about where I'm gonna call it a day. So we ended up setting the light straight behind the subject when you're looking at it from the main camera and uh, set it really, really low. So it's just barely giving us a little bit of warmth. Now you might be thinking, now Caleb, listen, this is all great, but 
I don't have diffusion, fancy lights, RGB, all this crazy stuff. I have maybe a soft box. Well, let's go ahead and quickly look at how you can get a really nice down and dirty lighting setup with just a cheap, cheap, cheap soft box. And this is what a setup would look like if you wanted to spend almost no money at all. I am using a really cheap soft box. I want to say it's around 20 bucks with a fluorescent bulb in it and it's the only light lighting this right now you can see it looks pretty nice now it's a lot harsher than our previous setup but hey maybe you like that look more and you want to go with a smaller fixture and skip the diffusion altogether now you won't be able to do as wide of a shot but hey it's going to do great for small stuff like this and this setup is using a microphone boom stand which is around 20 bucks and a small adapter thing that i'll link to in the description to make this whole setup work i can turn it off turn it on. It's really, really simple. And uh, that will get the job done to get started. So hopefully this has given you a couple ideas. If you're going to be shooting videos like this, photos, it's going to work great for photos uh, or really anything. I use this constantly for B-roll and I realizing this stand is slowly dropping down on me because I didn't tighten it enough. So that's gonna wrap this one up, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Links to everything in the description. Really appreciate you guys watching and hopefully you've enjoyed this. Let me know if you have any tips for other shooters out there and I'll see you in the next video.